time in zone two second week in a row um i'm alex i'm an aussie living in the usa and i recently moved from pennsylvania to virginia so i thought i would spend a few moments talking about what i've been up to this week so like a lot of other podcasts this one is about my crafty times um I kind of dabble in a lot of different crafts, including spinning and knitting and baking and cooking and sometimes failing miserably, like this week. <laughs> um, so, yeah, welcome. Um, you can find me on the internet on um, Ravelry, which is I'm very active on there. If you send me DMs, I will normally respond to them. Um, my username on Ravelry is Lexistar, L-E-X-I-S-T-A-R. And my Instagram is Lexic112, L-E-X-X-I-C-112. And I'll put them on the screen up here. Um, okay, so today we're going to talk a little about, bit about knitting and some spinning and some of the stuff I've been doing in the kitchen and then just some general chit chat. So, um, and as an additional, cause it's May, I thought I would jump on the new made May bandwagon. This is shirt number one. So I had a creative bug subscription for a little while ago. So I thought I'd make one. It's out of like some rayon I found. It's very lightweight. I think I made the 2XL and maybe next time I would just make the XL because it is very like loose fitting in general but um, it's comfortable I like it and now I can see that I've made the neckline wonky but you know I'm only learning to sew so why not I'm also embracing my inner nana today with the top bun and the earrings and the brooch so it's just it's just what today called for so on that note, let's just jump into it. I'm still working on my PO stuff by Renee Callahan of East London Knits. Um, I've gotten a bit further since last time. So I have joined the front and the back together. Um, it is curling a little bit here, but it shouldn't do once it's got once it's finished. The next clue comes out very shortly and I'm meant to have the body finished by then, but somehow I don't think that's going to happen. Um, partly because I'm tempted to make the sleeves before I finish knitting the rest of the body. Um, the pattern at the moment seems to me for a lot of things to be cropped and I'm like not super duper keen on cropped things. Um, and like the design of the pattern has really big deep pockets, but on the pictures it's like perhaps on smaller sizes, but the pockets seem to come up like quite under the boob. So I might lengthen it and still do deep pockets, but it depends if I have enough yarn. So this is the yarn I'm using. It's vintage, you can tell from the label, like patents. I'm not sure when it's from, but I mean, Basically, I think as soon as you, it says shrink resist treated on it, it's a good chance that, you know, it's old. So I can use up as much as I've got of this, which is like just over a thousand meters, which should be enough theoretically, but I'm going to have to stretch it. Okay, and I'm knitting that papillosa on a four millimeter or US size eight needles. So the second thing, I haven't worked on my full bralette at all this week. I just hasn't felt like it. But I have been working on my Vivid blanket because I finish um, spinning the Jacob that I showed you last week on my spindle. So I haven't blocked this yet. yet. But that's the finished. 
finished my made out of Jacob. I spun about 25 grams, so just under one ounce of the fiber, and it's about a DK the worsted weight to ply. So as I said, I spun it on my AGN and I plied it on my wheel. And it's kind of like I also had this much left of the sample I made. And you can see like there's there's fibers full of like these god hairs or camp or something. I spent so much time just looking at them and picking them out because they're kind of rough and they're kind of ugly. And so that's a that's a little bit annoying, but this fiber was like relatively inexpensive so I'm not too upset about it it's just a bit of extra work and you can see that I've tried to get rid of a lot of an actual knitting of this so that's my Jacob blanket and my Jacob square for the vivid blanket this is my Shetland square and it's been really useful having them to compare against each other because even though neither of these are blocked you can kind of see the difference in them. So the Shetland, they were both spun short forward draw on the spindle and then plied on the wheel. You can see the this one's so kind of fluffy, whereas this one's like kind of smoother, a bit shinier. It's just it's just a completely different texture to one another. And I'm super excited to see how the rest of the wools I've got behave. Okay, so then that kind of leads nicely. Oh, I wanted to say about the Jacob, what a difference the washing in it made. So this, um, I soaked it and then I squished a bunch of the water out and I beat it against the wall as finishing. Um, and that's probably partly what made it go fluffy, even though I did a very similar finishing on the Shetland. But um, I was a bit concerned when I had finished spinning it that it was going to be like a very wiry and it felt super rough and holy crap washing made the difference it's like softened it up it's made it a much more floofy and it's like it's I think I wouldn't want a cowl out of it but if it was on in a sweater on top of an extra layer of clothes maybe not quite next to skin it would be fine and it seems to be like very sturdy so I might be able to use it for like some weaving or something um, I've got a I bought a pound of it initially and so this square and this bit was 25 grams so about an ounce and trying to figure out imperial measurements there's 16 ounces in a pound and a pound is just under 500 grams um, but I need 400 grams of, not 400 grams, four ounces, so 113 grams roughly, to finish in a project for the Shave em to Save em sticker to qualify. So I've been spinning it up on my wheel. This is roughly probably two, two ounces or like 200 grams, a bit over 250 grams. Um, I'm spinning this short forward on my spinning wheel and these are just some extra bobbins I got because I like how they're cut up cut, cut out the bobbins I got with the wheel are like solid wood in here and it makes it really difficult to see how much you've load loaded on to the bobbin when you've started without having to sort of pick yourself up and look over it which kind of wrecks the I think um sorry more guard hairs just see what's sticking out see what I mean Ooh, down. There you go. It's little scratchy, campy bits. Um, and I've got to put this down because otherwise I'll keep looking at it and keep picking them out forever. So, um, yeah, I've portioned off four ounces of the Jacobs has been up for the shave to save him. But seeing as Stash Dash is starting soon, I might end up just spinning up all the singles and, um, and just making it all into a two-ply for something. I'm hoping it will end up being around a DK weight because I think that's what I use the most of in general. It seems to, I, I buy it and it moves out of my stash pretty quickly. Um, it's just kind of a nice comfortable mid-weight. Mid but um, yeah, 
I, the other thing with the Jacob is it's super fun when it's like winding onto the bobbin because when it spins you get all of these variations in the colour. You can't see it like there's a lighter bit going through here and then a darker bit but it's highlighted more when it's actually going onto the bobbin and even though it just mostly is like this warm kind of grey see it's just been fun to spin because of that and it drops out so nicely. Um, so it's quite relaxing to spit apart from the cap, which is just like, pick that bit off, pick that bit off, pick that bit off. But what can you do, right? Um, so I'm still working on the Gotland on my egret. Um, it's been really slow going. I haven't put, made much progress on this. And I think what I'm going to do, because I still have heaps, left I will probably weigh how much this was it was around 50 grams when I started and I will separate the second bit into like a 25 grams and then whatever I've got on here I'll just keep spending the rest of the 25 grams on this spindle and then swap to a different one for the second half of it because I think part of the reason why I'm having trouble with it drifting apart and not getting enough twist to hold it together is because the spindle like this is too big and it's a bit unwieldy. So while it spins nicely when you're trying to maintain this not to fall apart, it just is hard to do and draft at the same time. So I think I might make things a bit easier on myself and swap that out. So currently on my Aegean spindle, I am spinning this color called Warm Woolen Mittens. It's a Corydale and it's by Hip Strings and I bought it at SSK when I went last year. I was lucky enough to go. And which is Super Summer Knit Together, which is the summertime retreat put on by the Knit Girls. Um, it was an excellent experience and I'd like to go again, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. So. But what I wanted to say about this, you could, I've done half of the, I th I've got like, I don't know, it was a bit over an ounce and it was a sample pack of a few different, of six of their different colorways and blends of fiber. And so this is Corydale and this is what the fiber, the second half of the fiber looked like. And I wanted to start with it out of the pack because I haven't really historically enjoyed spinning very much Corydale. I found it, even though everyone says it's a good beginner spindle spin or just a good fiber to start with, I think maybe a lot of the Corydale I've gotten has been not the best prepared. So, and also I was like not sure about this because there's that big chunk of musty yellow in it, which I am not super keen on yellows. But there's also the side, which is just beautiful. Um, however, I need to take my hat off to hip strings because when it spins up into singles that yellow just makes this whole color pop see to me it kind of looks like a cross between like it's, you know that part of Disney Sleeping Beauty the animated version where it's got all like the stained glass series in it is like reminds me of the colors of that but also like kind of peacock feathers and it's it's really beautiful and I'm loving spinning it up so I'm gonna do the second half of it like this and then ply them together and I should have a little DK wait mini scale but from that what I wanted to talk about was so the Corydale from hip strings right look at this that's hardly any pressure. I'm holding this hand like I would a, you know, a baby bird because that's how you're meant to use your fiber supply. But it's just, it's just drafting out as so nicely. And maybe I'm a convert to Corydale or maybe I'll just only buy hip strings Corydale. But like, it's kind of changed my mind a bit. Um, just in comparison, I wanted to show you, this is what I got when I, <laughs> bought my first spindle and you can see that's what I spun and I got so frustrated and it's so horrible and trying to spin that was just like 
a nightmare. So when I first started on a spindle, I bought it and I had a go, like had a couple of goes and got so frustrated. I put that in my wiggly felty bits in a bag in the back of the cupboard and basically didn't pick it up for like three years probably until I moved here. And then I started using a spindle again and finding an enjoyment for it. But this is the fiber I got with it, right? It's a Corridale, probably wouldn't pick this color now either. But in terms of trying to, being a baby spinner and trying to actually like spin it, it was just, I don't know, it's either, it seems to be better now, but it's definitely not the same kind of texture that the hip strings fiber has. Maybe as a more, and it's also, you know, it's just in lumps in this bag. And because of that, you know, when you're a beginner, you just don't know how to like basically find a good end to start off with and don't know much about pre-drafting. So it was not good. It was very frustrating. And I think from that experience, if you're just starting with a spindle and you're finding it super duper frustrating, maybe try a different fiber or a different prep or if you've got spinning friends who have a like a little sample of something that they've really enjoyed spinning and that drafts easily maybe they can you know you can do a trade or they'll give it to you and you can have a go with that because sometimes I think it's just the fiber and if it wants to stick together sometimes maybe try a natural color rather than a dyed fiber because as pretty as dyed fibers are the dyeing process can compact it and full it a little bit which will make it like stuck together more and harder much much harder to see like this guy I'm putting a fair bit of force on here and seriously it's not going to be that long of a staple length but it just doesn't doesn't want to draft so yeah find a friend talk to them about it if you don't have friends um, there's a bunch of spinning forums on Ravelry that I'm sure someone can point you in the direction if you just ask them, you know, put, put the word out there, be like, I'm a beginner, I need some help picking fiber, this is what's been happening, I might troubleshoot you. Ravelry is full of lovely, helpful people. So that reminds me about the other spinning project that I've started. I just did a little sample of it because I wanted to see if my idea would work and if it would actually look nice. Or not so this is a combo spin of some of the fiber that I bought when I was first starting and do you know what the problem is with it the problem was with it I really like the finished result so that means I'm gonna keep going this is um, a, like I said it before a combo a combo spin of two different braids of fiber and it t has turned into this kind of lovely movie maybe like a dusty grape kind of color with like bits of white and lighter colors in it. And um, yeah, it's pretty. And I can see myself using these colors a lot. So I'm going to persevere. But the reason why I was like not sure about it was I wanted to find out if it was worth it to keep going because the two fibers I'm using have been sat sat in my stash for a really long time in braids so I think they're three years old probably by now and like <laughs> trying to draft them is just so frustrating and it was so hard on my hands like um, so what I did to make this mini skein is I took like a small section of one of these guys, like about that much, and a section of this, which is 80% um, Corydale and 20% Alpaca. Might also be why I thought I hated Corydale. Um, and this is Corydale and like 80% Corydale, 20% Silk. This was dyed with um, red cabbage, which when I bought it, I didn't really, it was actually a different color. And that's because I didn't realize that red cabbage is actually a fugitive dye, which essentially means that it will die in the first place, but it will fade. 
and really quickly. Luckily enough though, I think this is still like very pretty from the silk. It kind of just makes it sheeny. And I think it with the alpaca kind of brings out like it stops an alpaca being from being so matte. Um, yeah, so I've had some success pulling this apart and then attenuating them together and then rolling them up and spinning them in like a little from the middle of it, like so like this way to as a combo. But um, I was rereading Yana Texture and Gillian Moreno's tip on combo spinning is to just start with an amount that's like a finger width amount so I'm gonna try that and then attenuate pre-draft them together and um, I'm gonna try that because if that works better than spinning all of this fiber will be much less of a nightmare and more enjoyable and then hopefully I'll actually want to continue doing it which like I said, I want the yarn because I think it's really pretty. And I actually think I've been, I've got high hopes of making a shifty cardigan out of hand spun or a shifty sweater out of hand spun. And so far the sample of the shifty that I tried was an absolute fail. It's my fault for not checking gauge. Um, so that's ripped down. It's just frustrating thinking that I'll probably have to go down to two and a half millimeter needles to knit a sweater. and it'll just be a lot of knitting so I want to be sure next time before I start it um cool so just a bit of other chit chat about what I've been doing I had a very um productive ish day and you'll see why I'm saying productive ish in a second um I was kind of in the make all the things in the kitchen mode um so I made some yogurt which worked and I started some sourdough wheat bread, which was an absolute fail. Again, it was completely my fault. I just was like, must do stuff. And so I just ignored basically all the techniques that you need to actually make it succeed. So it turned into a round, fairly tasty disc that did not hardly rise. Um, so my plan is on the weekend to start it again, but actually enlist the help of my husband who has made sourdough bread many times before and knows the correct technique and also to start feeding it from the, our starter from today. So it will be active. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was a fail. And then when I was in the make all the things mode, I roasted some potatoes and some butternut squash pumpkin um, and intending to make that into gnocchi and I uh, fail also fail um, I didn't roast the potatoes long enough and they were also probably the wrong type of potatoes but I've still got some leftover roasted squash so I might make scones we'll see and I just might eat it out of the jar out of the container it's in but in successful news is I made some orange marmalade and I've never really liked marmalade before. Um, I found it a bit bitter, but I took a lot of care to kind of chop out more of the pith in the oranges and I actually really like it. So that's good because we have a lot <laughs> and I'm gonna eat it and put it in tea and maybe now I'm thinking about making duck with it on it or maybe pork chops because I think that would be delicious. Um, yeah and when I said I was looking forward to a coffee last week we found a new coffee shop made a very nice cup of coffee which is exciting and so this week what I'm looking forward to is we're going to find a place that nearby within walking distance on Saturday that we can get a barn near and a Vietnamese iced coffee and I'm so excited I hope it's good even if it's mediocre it'll probably still be good because I really like barn near. Alright, bye for now. Hopefully 